Good morning, everyone. It's 11.45 here in Glasgow on Thursday, the 30th of November 2017. And it's therefore my pleasure to introduce to you the global list of digitally endangered species for 2017, also known as the Bit List. The Bit List has been prepared by the Digital Preservation Coalition with help from our colleagues around the world, including NCDD, Nestor, NDSA, and the Open Preservation Foundation. We've created the bit list in order that we may raise awareness and set the agenda in the development of digital preservation services. We're doing this because digital preservation can make bleak reading. If you know anything about the subject, you'll be familiar with stories of bit rot, of data loss, of media obsolescence and the consequences that flow from that. And of course, it's a game that is very familiar, a topic very familiar to us all, because each of us have our own stories uh, of data loss and its implications for us. Digital preservation can make very bleak reading indeed. A familiar term used to describe the problem of digital preservation and the prospect ahead of us is the digital dark age, a time and place when data fails and civilization itself is put at risk. Those sorts of narratives are very tempting for someone who wants to raise awareness or get attention around the needs of digital preservation. But we have to really ask ourselves in the long run whether such predictions are realistic. They fall into that category of narrative where the apocalypse is coming soon. It overlooks issues which are well understood around disposal and typically it leads to a discussion about a storage device that can last forever. More importantly, it ignores some really great work. The Digital Preservation Coalition uh, operates the Digital Preservation Award and it's been doing so since 2004. And with this program, we're able to draw attention to really great work, really inspiring research and development projects which have found their way into services. Connecting clever people to each other by drawing attention to the success stories which they can share. The coalition was founded in 2002 and we've been celebrating these success stories since 2004. That's more than 10 years worth of good news stories we can share around digital preservation. And yet, the narrative around digital preservation seems not to have changed uh, over the last 15 or 20 years. Still, we hear stories of imminent disaster. So we believe it's time for a new narrative around digital preservation. We want to set the agenda, to seize the agenda, to present good practice and to target resources where research is really needed. And to that end, we've got two simple initiatives. The first of these is the International Digital Preservation Day, today, the 30th of November 2017. The purpose of the International Digital Preservation Day is to raise awareness around the topic and to allow this large and growing international community to connect properly and communicate with each other. And in order to achieve that, the Digital Preservation Coalition itself offers the bit list, the global list of digitally endangered species. The bid list began life as a proposal to the DPC's advocacy subcommittee. It began as a comparison with the red list of digitally endangered species, where we are able to present a group five or six different categories of how different species are at risk. The theory then would be for us to present a series of successes and also challenges though in order that we can target resources where they're needed rather than present a generic apocalyptic vision of digital preservation. We also want to be clear that there are a mix of different risks, a mix therefore of different types of material that could be listed uh, on the bit list. We're aware and the jury are also aware that we've created this list from scratch with a blank sheet of paper in front of us. And it's our hope that if it is in fact a success, 
that we will then be able to update the list annually. And those annual updates will demonstrate how we've made progress and how also new risks may have emerged. We began the list simply by inviting nominations from DPC members for people to propose any uh, item that they felt was at risk uh, and for them to allocate some categorization as to how immediate uh, and how serious that risk was. Incidentally, we ended up with about 100 nominations from that process, some of them uh, duplicates, some of them nested within uh, each other. That very long list was then presented to a jury, a jury which we'll turn our attention to in a moment, which has met four times uh, since uh, then in October and in November, which has therefore had the process of clarifying and finalising and validating uh, the list which will be presented in a moment. The finalised list, the jury only completed its work last week, so what I'm presenting to you really is hot off the press. Uh, and of course, it's published today at 12 o'clock GMT, which is right in the middle of International Digital Preservation Day. So here then is the jury list uh, drawn from three different continents, from seven different countries and from every possible combination of uh, subject matter expert that you would expect to find within the digital preservation community. All of them DPC members or allies in some form or other. Uh, the jury had not simply the task of reviewing and validating the records or the proposals uh, submitted to us, but also of establishing the process through which the bit list itself could be created from a blank sheet uh, of paper. So we should note not simply their work, but also our hearty thanks to the jury for taking time to validate and to comment and to correct uh, various early drafts of the bit list. Well, it seems to me that we've been keeping you in suspense for a while now, trying to build up the tension around the global list of digitally endangered species. I think it's time now that we lift the embargo and share our findings with you. Let me introduce first up the categories. The bit list has six different categories which operate from the lower risk uh, end of the digital preservation spectrum down to materials that we believe to be practically extinct. We've also created a hold all category of materials which we're concerned about, materials which have been nominated or proposed to us, but which frankly we've not had the time or insight in order for us to be able to validate or assess. So everything on the bit list has one or other of these categories attached. It's also important to note that materials can move up and down the bit list and we'll look at that in a moment. Bit list nominations are presented in the following style. Here's your first one. Materials posted to current web-based social media platforms or their equivalents. Note first up that the nomination comes from a DPC member or DPC partner. We've not made it our job to try to map the entire digital estate, you'll be pleased to know. Instead, we've responded to those nominations received. We've proposed a series of actions for every piece uh, of material on the bit list. We've also noted the date uh, in which it was assessed by the jury. It's important to note the date it was assessed by the jury because it's our intention to update these assessments on an ongoing basis. Every item has a classification as to how vulnerable or endangered we believe it to be. But notice there are a series of specific examples. So by and large, the nominations are quite large groupings in which there are a series of examples. Not only are there examples which may vary in their performance in relation to the classification, but we're also identified what we believe to be aggravating conditions. And where there are aggravating conditions, so a specific example can move out of one classification and potentially move up the endangered list, or indeed where good practice can be observed, uh, an object will move down the list. 
So in this case, we have a series of vulnerable collections, which in the presence of aggravating conditions become uh, endangered, but which in the context of good practice and well-managed preservation facilities would simply become a lower risk category. We have about 20 items on the bit list in total, and you'll be pleased to know that it's not my intention to go through each one of them with you describing the aggravating condition or providing examples to justify them. What I'm going to give you just now is quite a compressed and summarised version of the bit list. But if you go to that URL, which is on screen now, you should be able to, after 12 o'clock today, follow up the full details of every item and see the examples and some of the logic associated with how we've worked out the bit list. And so to the first of our classifications, the vulnerable category. Digital materials are listed as vulnerable when the technical challenges to preservation are modest, but responsibility for care is poorly understood, or where the responsible agencies are not meeting preservation needs explicitly. This classification includes lower risk materials in the presence of aggravating conditions. There is one nomination in this category. Materials posted to current web-based social media platforms or their equivalents. Examples include Facebook posts, blog posts or Twitter messages. Our second category is endangered. Digital materials are listed as endangered when they face technical challenges to preservation or responsibility for care is poorly understood or where the responsible agencies are poorly equipped to meet the preservation needs. This classification includes vulnerable materials in the presence of aggravating conditions. There are eight nominations within the endangered category. Born digital photos and videos streamed on social media or uploaded to cloud services such as Flickr, YouTube or Vimeo. Corporate records of long duration held on network drives, intranets and document systems such as corporate email or contractual dealings. Digi digital legal evidence and digital legal records such as CCTV or records on public inquiries. Digital music production and digital musical sharing, thinking here, for example, of musical scores and different types of encoded musical recording. Digital radio recordings are listed in this category, such as those which are held on single LTO tapes where there may be no backup or no refreshment schedule. Orphaned digital works are listed in this category. Digital materials where copyright cannot be traced and, this, and therefore preservation actions are constrained. A famous example in this case is the second half of the BBC Doomsday Project. The endangered category also includes published research outputs in digital form. Thinking here in particular of digital electronic journals, electronic theses, ebooks, and monographs, especially those which fall outside of the collecting policy of legal deposit libraries. Finally, this group includes records of long duration from local government or other government agencies. Examples here also include email, corporate correspondence, manuals of good practice, records relating to long-lived contractual agreements, such as public finance uh, initiatives, records relating to critical infrastructure or child uh, protection records. Our next category is critically endangered. Digital materials are listed as critically endangered when they face material technical challenges to preservation and there are no agencies responsible for them or those agencies are unwilling or unable to meet the complex preservation needs. This classification includes endangered materials in the presence of aggravating conditions. There are 10 items currently described as critically endangered. 
Born digital images held on offline or portable storage devices. Community archives and community generated content. Digital materials stored on magnetic portable media, especially when that magnetic media is past its sell by date. Digital materials stored on older portable media, which is non magnetic. Again, especially those materials which are beyond the lifetime of their warranty or where there is only one copy of those materials. We also believe that family or personal records are critically endangered where there is uncertainty perhaps uh, over ownership and there is a proliferation of different data types. Gaming, data from gaming, we believe to be critically endangered, as is media art, where there is significant amounts of expertise, but that expertise is only poorly distributed across the scale of the challenge faced. In this category, we have also uh, allocated politically sensitive data. Interesting nominations came into the bit list jury around politically sensitive and politically complicated matters such as environmental records from the United States. And so we believe those records and other material like it to be critically endangered. In this category also are smartphone apps. We were made aware of an update to IO, the Apple i iOS system uh, version 11, which caused a great family of previously supported apps no longer to work on the iPhone. And finally, in this category, unpublished research outputs. Typically, research data, data supporting theses, correspondence between researchers that is not otherwise published, materials associated with virtual research environments, community run databases where information is shared between researchers, all of which has no formal published path and therefore all by default falls outside of the normal requirements of legal deposit. These are particularly at risk where there is no institutional policy and no disciplinary understanding of what good practice might look like. Our next category relates to materials which we believe to be practically extinct. Digital materials are listed as practically extinct when the few known examples are inaccessible to most people by most practical means and methods. And this classification includes critically endangered materials in the presence of aggravating conditions. There are two nominations in this category. Pre World Wide Web video text data services and bulletin board services such as Minitel or Prestel and pre World Wide Web view data and teletext services such as Airtel, Teletext Oracle and CFAX. Now, we are open to the idea that there are examples of these materials in the wild. There may well be examples of these materials having been captured or harvested, but we don't know explicitly how systematically they have been collected uh, or sampled. And so we present them to you as examples of materials which we believe to be, in all practical senses, extinct and cannot be retrieved and are inaccessible to most people by practical means and methods. Our final category lists materials which are of concern. When an active member of the digital preservation community has expressed a legitimate concern, but the concern hasn't yet been assessed properly by the BitList jury, we create a category therefore which holds these materials for now until such times as the jury is in a position to assess them. There are nine items of concern on the list. Portable document format, website sites containing flash, email, data posted to dis defunct or little used social media platforms like Friends Reunited or MySpace, geomagnetic data, pre-production TV and movie materials, 
pension, mortgage and insurance records which have to live for an extended period, medical records which have to live for an extended period, uh, and architectural and engineering data which may also have to live for an extended period and which may also have complexities and sophistication associated with the platforms themselves. There are nine items on this list, but nominations are now open. As I say, there are about 20 items on the bit list in total, and it's too much to go into in one short presentation. However, I do hope that you find this presentation interesting. And if you want to look for more information, then you're very welcome to do so. I follow the link on screen now. So that concludes then my presentation of the bit list. I commend it to you. I invite debate. I invite speculation. We invite your comments. We do not expect to have got this right the very first time. But it is in the debate and it is in the speculation and it is in the criticism that we hope to provoke some debate and provoke some action around digital preservation needs. I want to end my presentation by reminding you all about the Digital Preservation Coalition, who we are and what we do. The DPC exists to do six things and we do it together. The DPC offers advocacy, community engagement, workforce development, capacity building, good practice and standards and good governance. We exist to secure a digital legacy. We are a not-for-profit, member-owned, member-run organisation. We are international and we are vendor neutral. We're cross-sector and we're cross-discipline and deliberately so. The DPC is owned and run by its members. We have no core grant behind us. And although the membership of the DPC has grown substantially in recent years, there's always room for one or two new members. So please do get in touch with the DPC. Consider us as a friend and partner to your work in digital preservation.